Welcome to the SciShow Quiz Show, the show where the facts aren't made up and the points do matter. I mean... That, sort of. The facts, they sort of matter. Okay, the what facts, are, oh, definitely the facts real, are definitely real. But the, but the points... Uh, well, they determine so whether you win or lose, That's so true. That's they true. do matter. And then when I lose, I walk out of here and I go home and I take a bath and cry. Yeah. Well, at least you got a bath out of it. It's just a daily ritual That's for me. Nice. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's well, uh, very sad. <laughs> well, okay. Well, okay. I'm Stephen Chin, and I'll be your host today with this cheery bunch of people. Our first contestant, uh, you know this guy, he's Hank Green, uh, and he'll be going tete a tete, head to head in French oh, against Megan Tenyes. That is my name. Hey. Hey, everybody. You used to work for SciShow. I really did. And you helped develop SciShow Kids. I, I, that is also a fact, and this show is We've all about We've got all facts. the facts. You got points. Did she just yeah. get points? <gasps> yes, 200 points for Megan. Yay! Oh, God, Yay. Thank Woo. you so much. <laughs> Hank will be competing on behalf of Robert Who. Hi, Robert Who. And Megan will be playing for Kathy Phillips. Kathy Phillips, let's do this. Our contestants today will be battling for intangible bragging rights and some very tangible prizes. Caitlin. What can our contestants win today? Well, Stefan, our contestants are playing for glory, obviously, but they're also playing for material goods. Someone will go home today with the signed script with all the answers for the quiz show so you can quiz your friends at home. Megan and Hank will also be signing their wager cards at the end of the last round, and each contestant will get those, and one contestant will be going home with the I won SciShow Quiz Show pin, while the other very lucky, very glorified person will be going home with the I lost SciShow Quiz Show pin. Good luck, and back to you, Stefan. Thanks, Caitlin. Megan's got 200 points, Hank has zero <laughs> points. We're now That's resetting right. the score to 1,000 points and 1,000 points. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So that was just a temporary win. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The pre-round okay. win. Every time you answer a question correctly, you'll get about 200 points. About? And every time you answer incorrectly, you'll lose about 100 points. Maybe 87? Okay. Maybe 87. I don't know. Uh, Unless your answer's really bad. Mm -hmm. And you might have to lose 500 points. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's time for our first round. Let's hope you don't turn too red trying to answer questions about bodily rainbows. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, you got rainbow happening. Sure. Just I've got the advantage. The colors of your tissues and bodily fluids can say a lot about you and oh. your health. If your pee is dark yellow, for example, might be a good idea to have a glass of water. If it's pink, Maybe lay off the beets. Oh. If uh, you're not eating beets, you should probably see the doctor. Definitely see the doctor. Uh -huh. I eat a lot of beets, and I've never seen the you, pea change color. You're a beet eater? I love beets. Oh, my God. Really? I don't they like They taste beets. like... I've recently just been able to put them, like, in salad, but... Oh, man. No, I'll eat... I'll, like, I'll just eat a beet. <laughs> not, like, a raw beet. Okay. I like... The idea that that's the first stage is that you can put them in the salad, but then yeah. you have to take them out before you eat it. <laughs> we like, gotta I work like up how they to. Look yeah, in yeah. The salad. very pretty. It's a great, nice. great looking salad. <laughs> so, talking about pea okay. colors, mm -hmm. but you might not realize just how colorful other parts of you can be okay. and what those colors mean. Take your blood, for example. Blood comes in all kinds of colors in the animal kingdom. In humans, hemoglobin, the protein that shuttles oxygen around, makes our blood bright, bold red. Except, our blood is not always that color. Three of the following are real, actual colors of human blood that could help your doctor diagnose if something's wrong. Oh. Which of these is not a real, actual, true color of blood? This is weird. Yeah. Maroon, blue, green, or dark brown? Oh, wow. I'm gonna go with blue. It seems like that couldn't happen. That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Green, it's though. always gonna have the hemoglobin in there somewhere. Yeah. So if yeah. it's like blue, it's mm -hmm. probably green. Yeah. So, but why green? Yes. I don't know. I am it, stumped right now, and I'd love to learn the answer to that. Michael? The answer is B. Blue. I know, I know. When you look at your arm or something, your veins look blue, but the blood in them is still red or maroon. Hemoglobin absorbs most wavelengths of visible light pretty well, except for the red ones, which it only partially absorbs. Exactly which reddish wavelengths are most reflected varies based on whether the hemoglobin is bound to oxygen. When it is, the molecule's shape is slightly different, and that shifts the wavelengths that are most reflected from maroon to a brighter red. Green and brown blood can also happen, but they're signs that something is very wrong. Blood turns green to black when hemoglobin molecules incorporate 
incorporate sulfur instead of iron like they're supposed to. It's a condition called sulfhemoglobinemia, and it's really rare. But it can happen when people take certain meds, like sulfonamides, which are sometimes prescribed for migraines. Brown blood is caused by a variant of hemoglobin called methemoglobin, which just means that the hemoglobin molecules contain iron atoms that are oxidized, or missing an electron. All blood has some methemoglobin in it, but as the percentage of methemoglobin ticks above 1%, it gets browner and browner. In both cases, it's important to root out the ultimate cause, because both weird variants don't carry oxygen as well, and can essentially suffocate your tissues. Gross. All right. Question mm. number two. Speaking of colorful bodily fluids, we all know those awful yellow pit stains, right? Uh -huh. Well, if you watched our episode on why those happen, you'll know that sweat isn't actually yellow. Your shirt turns yellow because of proteins in your sweat reacting with aluminum compounds in your deodorant. Yeah. But there That's why I never get those yellow pit stains, because I haven't worn deodorant, wear deodorant since deodorant. middle school. Hmm. It's not true. What? I, uh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's impressive. <laughs> I mean, people have a stinky. scent. That's, yeah. that's, it's, it's, it's intentional. Yeah. <laughs> the facts are real here. People have a scent. Yes. There are also people who complain of black, blue, green, red, or even orange stains to their clothes, mm. usually coming from a condition known as chromidrosis. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. What bodily fluid is changing color? Is it? Urine, sweat, saliva, or semen? Oh, gosh. Mm. I'm not. Uh, say I feel, one more time. Can you say one more time? Urine, sweat, saliva, or semen? Say them again. Urine, so sweat, which one saliva, semen. <laughs> semen. Incorrect. What? Oh, God, you had to say, in the end, you had to say the word semen live <laughs> on the air. It's horrible. Why did I choose that? But I was like, that has, that has to, to be, be the one. Answer. But they're talking Negative about like staining points, the clothes. Mm -hmm. Why is there so much semen? <laughs> okay, now I have well, to. I have to what hit you, the button. What do you got? And say, well, I feel like it got, it's not sweat because we we're just talking about sweat. So I, but how's the saliva getting on your clothes? What's the other one? Urine, sweat, or oh, saliva? God, I guess I'm gonna go with urine. Urine is incorrect! Is this it just sweat? Yep. Oh. <laughs> the answer is B, sweat. Hydrosis means sweating. That was the hint. While your deodorant is to blame for the yellow stains on your white shirts, people with chrome hydrosis do actually produce colored sweat. Your sweat is produced by two different types of glands, and the ones involved here are the apocrine glands. Those produce the smellier kind of sweat that you get in places like your underarms and genitals, and your eyelids and nostrils for some reason. It contains fats, leftovers from various cellular processes, and waste products. And it can stink pretty bad after certain components are broken down by bacteria. Chrome hydrosis happens when your apocrine glands produce too much of a pigment called lipofuscin, which is normally created when your cells break down fats. It can vary in color from yellowish brown to blue or even black, depending on how oxidized it is. While everyone makes some, you can be genetically predisposed to overproducing the stuff. So you sweat like a Gatorade ad from birth or when you hit puberty as hormones cause your sweat production to ramp up. Technicolor sweat can also come from a condition called pseudochrome hydrosis. That's when the sweat you make is colorless, but then it mixes with stuff on your skin that colors it. With pseudochrome hydrosis, compounds produced by bacteria are most likely to blame. And if that's the case, a quick dose of antibiotics can often solve the problem. This is all about <laughs> learning about my body and what can go wrong and the rainbows of sweat that could fall out of my body if I <laughs> get that. It's not yeah, about yeah. winning and no. losing. It's uh -oh. about knowing another thing Which that could go wrong fluids. at any time. Oh, yeah. It's that's always good to know. Yeah. Well, that's it for round one. <sighs> Moving on. Hank, you're leading right now with 1,100. Right. Not for long. <laughs> Megan, close behind with six. 900 <laughs> points. You'll have a chance to catch up here in round two. Okay. If you can read the fine print on side effects. Round two is about side oh, effects. Okay. When you hear the phrase side effects, you might think dizziness, bloating, anal leakage, or any of the other awful things pharma commercials mention in passing when trying to sell their newest drug. Yeah. Or death sometimes. Or yeah, death. Sure. Oh, that's always like, in there. They always <laughs> they, they squeeze that one in so they yeah. go real quick. I think quick. I'll keep my eyebrows the normal <laughs> consistency. What are you doing to your eyebrows? I don't know. Just there's drugs <laughs> just for like altering. eyelash thickness. Yeah. Can I get the eyebrows? That's dress? just not a good way to die. Dude, no, it's just yeah. not worth the risk. 
right? And it's just like, how'd they go? Ah, their eyelashes weren't thick enough. Vanity. And yeah. they felt bad about it because mm-hmm. of culture. <laughs> but side effects aren't always a bad thing. Hmm. In fact, unforeseen consequences or accidental byproducts can be kind of awesome. In 1938, Roy Plunkett was working as a chemist trying to make new refrigerants. So he started with a gas called tetrafluoroethylene, planning to mix it with hydrochloric acid to get a kind of freon. It was a go big or go home kind of experiment, so he rounded up 45 kilos of the rare gas, cooled the canisters on dry ice so there wouldn't be too much pressure, and set up the special mixing chamber where he'd be adding the acid. Oh, this seems dangerous. I know. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Really. No, and then he invented the fusion drive. Ooh, Amazing. We'll yeah. find out. That was the positive side effect. Yeah, right? fusion. Fusion. Yeah. Much to his dismay, when he opened the first cylinder of gas, nothing came out. When he looked inside, he was shocked to see the walls of the cylinder coated with a thin, slick film of ah. whiteness. Hmm. What hmm. did Plunkett accidentally make? Teflon, saccharin, LSD, or super glue? <laughs> Whoa. Teflon. Yes. <laughs> Correct. The answer is A, Teflon. Plunkett accidentally induced the small, simple carbon and fluorine molecules of tetrafluoroethylene to polymerize into long chains. His new white powder was the most inert substance he'd ever seen. It wouldn't react with anything he tried to test it with. And that's what makes Teflon so useful. The stuff not only keeps your food from sticking to your frying pan, it can contain some of the most potent acids and even be trusted to protect highly reactive explosives. It happens to be that saccharin, LSD, and superglue were also discovered by accident but not by Plunkett. It is rare that I know an answer on SciShow Quiz Show. Oh my goodness. But I did know that one. Good yeah. job. Yeah, gotta get one of those good thin white films. <laughs> just love a thin white film. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Shoot. I guess that's not a drug side effect. So just no. Kind of, yeah. okay. These are just, just side, side effects, effects generally. You know? Okay. Question number four. Okay. It's pretty amazing how many things we've made when we're definitely not trying to make them. Mm. Of course, all of our actions have consequences, like how the Industrial Revolution has led to the increasing levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide. That CO2 is changing our world in a lot of ways. Some of the predicted changes are downright terrifying, like increasing frequency and severity of dangerous weather events, or the shutting down of some major ocean circulating patterns. Yeah, that's bad. But other effects are not so clearly negative. Mm. They might even be kind of cool. Oh, cool. Three of the following four things are probably going to happen thanks to climate change. Which of these is not a likely side effect of increasing atmospheric CO2? Okay. Chirpier crickets. Oh. More fluorescent corals. Mm. Flowerier forests. Or weaker wines. Flowery forests? Incorrect. (laughs) I'm gonna... Weaker wines? That sounds that weird. Is correct. Hey, I'm just that was my killing it. The answer is D. Weaker wines. There are a lot of side effects of climate change, and one of those is that the sugars in wine grapes will become more concentrated, leading to a higher alcohol content, not a lower one. That's because drought and heat are stressful for grapevines, leading to smaller grapes. There's some evidence that wine flavor, aroma, and color may also be affected. As for the other three, male crickets make that iconic chirping noise to attract their mates, and it's been long established that they chirp faster in warmer weather, probably because the extra heat keeps their muscles warm. And the last two are the findings of new studies published in 2018. One found that corals from the Red Sea produced more fluorescent proteins when researchers experimentally decreased the pH of their seawater, though no one really knows what the proteins are used for. The more CO2 there is in the air, the more there is in the water, and dissolved CO2 becomes carbonic acid. So in the decades to come, corals are probably going to start fluorescing more. The other study looked at nearly three decades worth of data from a tropical forest in Panama and found that the number of flowers produced had increased over time most likely due to increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. That's because carbon dioxide can act as a kind of fertilizer. If a plant has unlimited water and other nutrients, then there's little preventing it from photosynthesizing more when CO2 levels go up. But those CO2 benefits do have a limit, and other effects of climate change on temperature and weather are expected to have increasingly negative effects enough to cancel out that boost. So while we might get to keep our prettier flowered forests for a little while, eventually things will likely get a lot uglier. All right, that's it for our second round, which means it's time for our last question. Mm. So get your cards ready. 
and make some wagers based on your knowledge about all natural beauty products. Okay. Oh, Ulta? Is that a company? That is a company. That, <laughs> you better wager them all then. Yeah. You know a company. I do. <laughs> we'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back. Yeah. 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 We're so Woo. ready. We're pumped. All right. Let's do this. Makeup. All natural. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Archaeologists have found evidence oh. of makeup dating back thousands of years making the use of cosmetics one of our species' oldest behaviors. Mm. And it's all natural back then, because everything there was, was natural. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. synthetics. A lot of companies are returning to ancient methods to find cosmetic ingredients, some of which are pretty extravagant. One of the newest fads is great for Italian farmers, because it'll be a great boost of business for the 4,000 or so hellisiculturists in the country. I don't know what, that what is that? Can we know? No. Great. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You can find out in about 30 seconds. <laughs> the stuff cosmetic companies are after is said to work wonders as a moisturizer in skin creams, and science just might agree. The recent fad originated in Chile, but references to similar skin creams date back to Hippocrates. Mm. So the question is, hmm. what is the magical ingredient? Whale poop, snail slime, fish scales, or beetle bodies? What, wow. can, you, can you say the hella, hella word again? Heliciculturists. Oh, Italian yeah. heliciculturists. It's oh, great yeah. for Italian heliciculturists. This is going to be great for them, yes. Some helicopters. Helicopters. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> they raise helicopters There's from lots. little babies. <laughs> <laughs> so adorable, and we know whales are definitely up there, so that's probably the Flying answer. Up where? In the, in the sky. sky. Oh my god. Have you god. ever been up there before? No. They're beautiful. Glass whales. Mm -hmm. They're hard to see. Yeah. What is happening on my show? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Hank's drawing a picture. It's not good. It just it's looks like, like I just like this. Not the best picture. Just like when I went like this, but I know what but it is. But it's uh, maybe Do impressionist. You? Is that the right? Yeah, well, it gives me an impression. So, yeah, I have an impression as well. Gosh. You guys ready? Yeah. Show your answers. I said snails. I said snails too. You're both correct. Yay! Hey! What did you guys wager? Right. Hey. The answer is B, snail slime. Yep, that's right. Snail slime, or I'm sorry, snail secretion filtrate, is a popular new skin cream additive. Maybe this was kind of a trick question because those other three options are also used in cosmetics, but they're not moisturizers, and you're not going to find heliciculturists, aka snail farmers, making them. Snail slime moisturizer is actually a really old idea, as Hippocrates, the noted Greek physician, recommended a taste of ground snails for skin ailments centuries ago. As the story goes, the revival happened when Chilean snail farmers, raising the animals for the restaurant industry, noticed how quickly cuts and abrasions to their hands healed after handling their precious escargo. Because snails, get it? Escargo? All right. And just like that, modern snail slime skin cream was born. Most recently, it's become all the rage in Korea, Europe, and even in the US. And while some natural products are more for show than function, snail mucus might actually work. The stuff is sticky because it's a non-Newtonian fluid that solidifies and sticks until sheer stress is applied. And that's thanks to glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs, long sugary chains that are often used in skin products because they help keep skin moisturized and elastic. Either because of these GAGs or other ingredients, the mucus also seems to have antioxidant properties, which can help prevent aging-related damage, as well as growth factors that trigger skin cells to divide. And studies on snail and slug slime do suggest that it helps speed wound healing, and may even reduce wrinkles and improve skin texture. Good high, high five! five it was a good high five. But who's Satisfied. the winner? I bet all my points, so I bet probably all my... me. Rude, but... I just went all in like yeah. Roy did with his Teflon experiment. Yeah, that's yeah, the way to do it. That's the lesson that we've all learned today. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that one made the most sense. Yeah, Helix, because they have like Helix. Helix. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good job, Hank. Hey, thanks. Robert, I won you things. It feels like it's been a things. long time I mean, since I've won. Uh, yeah, well, you don't that's... win frequently. <laughs> Rub it in some more. It's good. Sorry. sorry. I just, I, <laughs> great. This is like the highest score I've ever gotten. I'm really proud of you. Oh, yeah. Really, this was like a this good a great competitiveness. Time. Yeah, so and good. You, you know, you knew that one. And I did. it wasn't you just knew a guess. An answer. It doesn't so ever I feel happen. like if you know the answer, <laughs> yeah. you should win. Yeah. So, That's Kathy, great. we, I tried, and you also get some sweet. I you still lost get stuff. Everyone gets a little Sci bit of something. Things. So, yeah. it's going to be I okay. You still get stuff. No yeah. one's going to be sad. Cool. Thanks for joining us for the SciShow Quiz Show. Megan, where can we find you? Oh, I'm on the internet. 
Um, you can find me at uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Megan Tenius. Um, I've done some series on Snarled and Hissy Fit, and now I'm going to be editing a fun show for Goldie Blocks, cool. which is a company that's inspiring girls to be interested in engineering yeah, and nice. problem solving. And your Instagram is very good, too. Oh, oh thank you. Megan <laughs> Ten. True. Yes. Yeah. It's a pun on my last name. <laughs> so people don't know how to <laughs> pronounce it. Exactly. We'll it's, put it on it's a little weird. It's not easy to spell. Yeah. Yeah. And also you're doing Robot Runway, yes. which sounds amazing. Yeah, absolutely. What Just, is, tell, explain this to me. It's girls, I think ages like 10 or so, yeah. take their favorite toys, or maybe they're not their favorites, but they tear them up, <laughs> and they actually like make the, the gears and the motors like and everything. Take and, things, build things out yep. of things. So it's like it's like an American Girl doll with like without one eye, <laughs> and like she's like getting revenge on her dentist. Is like there's do like they, do elaborate they battle. Do they battle? They battle oh, each other yes. until one of them falls into slime, and oh, then good. you know that's oh, the no, obvious one. That sounds very good. There's yeah. a link in the description, probably. <laughs> Probably. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us for the SciShow Quiz Show. And if you want to see more cool episodes about science, we're here at youtube.com slash scishow. And subscribe. <laughs> That's not the right <laughs> phrasing. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs>